Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk a little bit about the theory of the two-handed square knot. Um, so I, I think the theory is something that you rarely talk about. Um, and a lot of medical students, you know, you can figure out how to tie knots with practice, but let's be honest here, you don't really understand why and you're, you don't really understand what you're doing. So what I hope to do is to you know, go over some of the theory and by doing so give you a different perspective of knot tying, which will hopefully make knot tying in general just easier for all of you. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, what is a square knot? And uh, in my own honest opinion, uh, why it's called a square knot. So I'm going to go and tie a square knot for you right now. And I'm going to stop right here to show you something. So if you look closely, that kind of looks like a square, right? And so you kind of imagine where the name come from. It's a square, it's a knot, it's a square knot. So uh, that's my best guess of why it's called a square knot. Um, but I just want to point out a couple of things that kind of define a square knot, a certain pattern, if you say. So if you look at this string, notice that it's behind both this string and this string on the right side. And if you look at this string, you notice it's in front of both of this rope and this rope on this side, right? And so that's a characteristic of a square knot. And I'll show you that again here. We have a drawing. So again, this is a square knot. And notice, notice on this side, this rope right here crosses over these two ropes. And that notice this string on this side, this brown one right here, crosses underneath the string and the string. So again, that is that's what characterizes a square knot, that pattern you, that you see. And so I have uh, another model right here. And this shows you a square knot with four throws. And this is to show you, uh, you know, what exactly you're doing when you tie, uh, uh, you know, multiple square knots. So this is a square knot, this is a square knot, and this is a square knot. So essentially, you're just making four loops, um, and then the, the square knots kind of close out the loops. All right. So let's get back to here. All right. So if you think about it, you know, my question for you is, why do you get that pattern that we just talked about? Well, so each square knot consists of two throws. And so here's the first throw, and here's the second throw. And each time the strings cross, um, you rotate them about each other, right? And I can show you that here. So the strings are crossing. I'm making a new throw, the strings are crossing. And so there's two ways in which these strings can rotate. So this one, for example, can rotate, in this case, in front of the, the other string, or it can rotate behind the other string, right? So there's two different possibilities. And so essentially, each throw has two different rotation patterns. And so what a square knot actually is, it's a collection of throws in which the throws are rotated in very specific and predefined pattern. And that's all there really is to it. Um, and really, the way that you control how each of your throws rotate is determined by using your index finger and your thumb. So if you use your index finger to make a throw, your string rotates one way. If you use your thumb to start a throw, you're rotating this throw in a different way. All right? And so, again, um, if you use the wrong sequence between your index finger and thumb, so if you use your index finger instead of your thumb, or if you use your index finger, your thumb instead of your index finger, you end up with what we call a granny knot, uh, which is just, uh, you know, it's a square knot where the, or sorry, it's a knot in which the rotations are off. Um, and it's bad because it's not as strong as a square knot, but it really is not the end of the world. It, it'll still hold together, but, it, you know, the bottom line is still not as, as strong as a square knot. Okay, so you now that's the theory behind the rotation of what a square knot is. So the next thing I want to talk about is your starting position. So remember your starting position looks like this. So you cross the strings and the string in your left hand is closer to your body and the string in your right hand is further away from your body, right? And a question you're probably wondering at some point is like, why do I need to start like this? And I'm going to show you this by not starting with the strings crossed, right? And so if you try making your first throw, notice that there's a cross between your knot and where you want to put your knot down. And that's bad. So if you try to put that down, you know, it doesn't make a great knot. 
And so you want to get rid of that cross. And the way you get rid of that cross is by crossing your hands. So if you, I'm sorry, crossing the string. So if you cross the string, and if you make the knot, notice that cross is gone now, right? And so you know that's the reason you, your starting position is like this. That's the reason why you cross strings for your starting position because it gets rid of that cross that you make if you don't uh, cross your strings. Um, now, incidentally, that's also the reason why you don't cross your hands after your first throw um, because you've already crossed your strings. You don't need to cross your hand. So that's why you know for your first throw. After your first throw, your hands, your left hand's on your left side. You don't need to cross your hands like you do on your second throw. All right. So, I mean, we've taught you one way to tie a square knot. Is it the only way? Absolutely not. Um, if you think about it, if you play around with it, you realize that you can get a square knot down using many different sequences. Uh, but for a right-handed person. Um, those other sequences force your hands to be awkward positions, which is why the way that we've taught you has become the dominant technique out there. All right, so take home points. A correct square knot is dependent on a specific pattern rotation between its throws. And the rotation of each throw is determined by which finger, either your index finger or the thumb, that you use to start the throw, which is why you need to alternate between using your thumb and index finger for each throw. Um, the second point is that you cross strings for your starting position in order not to have a cross in your string for the first throw. But this also makes it so that you do not need to cross your hands after the first throw. And my last take home point is actually a challenge. Can you do this right handed? And I'm just going to show you quickly how I would do it right handed. That's my challenge. Good luck. <laughs>